Chapter 1. A Star is Born In the small, quiet town of Tampico, Illinois, a boy named Ronald Wilson Regan was born on February 6, 1911. His father, Jack Regan, was a shoe salesman with a big personality and a charming smile. His mother, Nell Regan, was a woman of deep faith and a loving heart. Their modest home was filled with warmth and laughter, despite the family's financial struggles. Ronald, or Dutch, as his father affectionately called him, was an active and curious child. He spent his days exploring the nearby Rock River, playing football with his friends, and listening to his mother's Bible stories. These early experiences in the heart of America would shape his character and values in profound ways. However, life in the Regan household was not always easy. Jack Regan struggled with alcoholism, causing tension and uncertainty. Despite this, Nell tried to maintain a stable environment for Ronald and his older brother Neil. She taught them the importance of kindness, perseverance, and faith, lessons that Ronald would carry with him throughout his life. Dutch's days in Tampico were filled with more than just childhood adventures. He witnessed the struggles of the ordinary working people around him, an experience that would later inspire his political philosophies. He was just a boy from a small Midwestern town, but his dreams were far bigger. In the midst of the wide fields of Illinois, Ronald Reagan started to develop the resilience and optimism that would one day lead him to the White House. But before that, another shining stage awaited him, Hollywood. In the midst of the Great Depression, finding work was a struggle for many Americans, including young Ronald Reagan. After graduating from Eureka College in Illinois, where he studied economics and sociology and shone as a student athlete, Ronald found himself uncertain about his future. One day, he stumbled upon a job advertisement for a sports commentator at the local radio station, Lilia C. in Davenport, Iowa. Armed with his college football experiences and a clear, confident voice, he decided to give it a shot. After a nerve-wracking audition, Ronald, to his delight, got the job. Soon, he was charming the listeners of DOC with his lively commentary, painting vivid images of football and baseball games with his words. His enthusiasm was infectious, and his audience quickly grew. This local boy, with his animated descriptions and warm personality, had found a way to bring joy to people during difficult times. His success didn't go unnoticed. In 1933, he was hired by Yu Radio in Des Moines, where he became known for his recreations of Chicago Cubs baseball games. He had never set foot in the stadiums he described, but with wire reports and his imagination, Ronald made the games come alive for his listeners. Through this period, Ronald's confidence grew. He had found his voice and discovered the power of his words to inspire and entertain. Little did he know, his ability to capture an audience's attention was preparing him for a grander stage that lay just on the horizon, Hollywood. Ronald Reagan's journey to Hollywood began unexpectedly. In 1937, while covering the Chicago Cubs spring training in California as a sports announcer, he managed to secure a screen test with Warner Brothers Studios. The executives were impressed by his good looks and natural charisma. A week later, he was offered a seven-year contract. He packed his bags, bid farewell to his radio career, and embarked on his Hollywood journey. The transition was not easy, as the new face in a world of glamour and glitz. Ronald felt like a small fish in a big pond. However, his Midwestern charm and down-to-earth personality quickly made him popular on the set. His first role was in a movie called Love is on the Air. Despite his nervousness, Ronald delivered a convincing performance. The critics were generous with their praise, and the audiences loved him. His early success led to a steady stream of roles. Soon, he was sharing screen space with some of the biggest names in the industry. His most memorable role came in 1940, when he played George Gipp in the film Newt Brockling, All-American. His portrayal of the dying football player won him critical acclaim. His line in the movie, Win Just One for the Jipper, became one of the most famous lines in film history, and the Jipper became a lifelong nickname for Ronald. Behind the camera, Ronald was leading a life as dramatic as the roles he played. His relationship with fellow actress Jane Wyman was the talk of the town, and they got married in 1940. 
The fairy tale, however, was short-lived. Their marriage was marked with tension and soon ended in divorce. While the world of Hollywood was filled with glamour, it also brought its share of challenges. But Ronald Reagan was no stranger to adversity. He faced it with the same determination and optimism that had seen him through his early years in Illinois and his time as a sports commentator. His journey in Hollywood was just another chapter in the dramatic life that was yet to unfold. Chapter 2. Stardom and Love As the 1940s dawned, Ronald Reagan's star was ascending in Hollywood. He was no longer the nervous rookie. He had earned a place among the respected names in the industry. He appeared in more than 50 films during this decade, playing a wide range of characters and showing his versatility as an actor. His boyish charm and genuine screen presence resonated with the audience. While he never won an Academy Award, he was praised for his performances in films such as King's Row, where he played a small-town playboy whose life takes a tragic turn. His performance was compelling and dramatic, earning him acclaim from critics and fans alike. Off-screen, Reagan was just as popular. His natural charisma and affable personality made him well-liked among his Hollywood peers. He was seen at glamorous parties and premieres, always with a beaming smile that hid the strain of his demanding career. While he thrived professionally, his personal life took a hit. His marriage with Jane Wyman was unraveling. The Hollywood lifestyle and Regan's increasing involvement in the Screen Actors Guild, he would later become its president, created a distance between the couple. Their fairy tale marriage ended in divorce in 1948, leaving Regan heartbroken. Yet, in the midst of the glitz, glamour, and heartbreak, Regan never lost his grounded, Midwestern values. He remained focused on his career, striving to improve as an actor and proving that he was not just a handsome face, but a serious artist. His journey was not without its bumps, but Regan took them in stride, always looking towards the horizon with unyielding optimism. In the midst of the hustle and bustle of Hollywood, Ronald Regan met Jane Wyman a talented actress with a captivating screen presence. They first crossed paths on the set of Brother Rat in 1938. Ronald was drawn to Jane's vivacious personality and undeniable talent, while Jane was impressed by Ronald's charm and charisma. Their friendship blossomed into love, and in 1940, they tied the knot. It was a match made in Hollywood heaven. The couple became a regular feature in the glossy magazines, their beaming faces symbolizing the glamour and excitement of Hollywood. The initial years were filled with bliss and excitement. They welcomed their first child, Maureen, in 1941, and later adopted a son, Michael. Reagan's career was on the rise, and the future seemed bright. However, behind the picture-perfect facade, the marriage was facing trouble. Ronald's increasing involvement with the Screen Actors Guild and his growing political interests created a rift between the couple. Jane, a devoted actress, felt neglected as Ronald spent more time on union activities. Despite their efforts, the couple couldn't bridge the gap that had grown between them. In 1948, Jane filed for divorce, marking the end of their once enchanting love story. The divorce was hard on Ronald, but he maintained a strong front, focusing on his work and his responsibilities as a father. This chapter in Ronald Reagan's life was filled with both joy and heartache. He experienced the thrill of love and the pain of loss, but these experiences were shaping him, making him stronger and wiser. Little did he know that a second chance at love was waiting for him, ready to transform his life in ways he could not yet imagine. The split between Ronald Reagan and Jane Wyman was not an overnight event. The problems in their marriage had been simmering beneath the surface for years. The once loving partnership was marred by constant disagreements and feelings of neglect. The glamour of Hollywood could not mask the growing distance between them. Ronald's growing political interests and his increasing responsibilities with the Screen Actors Guild were consuming much of his time and attention. His home life took a back seat, leading Jane to feel neglected. As a successful actress herself, Jane yearned for her husband's support and companionship but their clashing priorities created a divide that only widened with time. In 1948, Jane filed for divorce, citing irreconcilable differences. The news of their split sent shockwaves through Hollywood. 
The golden couple, it seemed, was not so golden after all. The divorce was hard on Ronald. He loved his family and had always pictured a happily ever after. Now, he was facing a reality he had not prepared for. The pain of his failed marriage was one of the greatest challenges he had faced in his life. Despite the personal turmoil, Ronald maintained his professionalism. He continued to work hard in his career, proving that he could handle the pressure. He also remained a loving father to his children, Maureen and Michael, ensuring they felt secure amidst the upheaval. The end of Ronald's marriage to Jane was a painful chapter in his life. It was a time of heartbreak and disappointment. However, the experience taught him resilience and gave him a deeper understanding of life's ups and downs. Little did he know that these lessons would serve him well in the years to come, both in his personal life and in his journey to the White House. Chapter 3. A Shift in Beliefs The late 1940s and early 1950s were a time of great political tension in America. The Cold War was escalating, and the fear of communism, known as the Red Scare, was spreading across the nation. Hollywood was not immune to this fear. In fact, it became a major battleground. Ronald Reagan, who was now president of the Screen Actors Guild, found himself in the middle of this ideological struggle. Initially, he was a supporter of liberal causes and had even been a registered Democrat. However, as the fear of communism grew, his political views started to change. He began to worry about the influence of communists in Hollywood. He saw colleagues blacklisted and careers ruined due to allegations of communist ties. This troubled him deeply, and he became a fervent anti-communist, working with the FBI to identify potential threats within the film industry. Reagan's stance put him at odds with some of his Hollywood peers, causing friction and controversy. Yet, he remained steadfast in his beliefs. He felt it was his duty to protect the industry he loved from what he perceived to be a dangerous ideology. The Red Scare was a turning point for Reagan. His growing concern over communism marked a shift in his political beliefs, moving him away from his liberal roots and toward a more conservative outlook. This shift was not just personal, it was also a sign of the changing times. It was a preview of the political path that Reagan would later tread one that would lead him far beyond the bright lights of Hollywood. As the 1950s rolled on, Ronald Reagan's political views continued to evolve. He was becoming disillusioned with the Democratic Party's policies, especially as he saw them through the lens of his anti-communist stance. He found himself increasingly attracted to the principles of limited government and individual freedom championed by the Republican Party. Reagan's shift in political allegiances didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process, shaped by his experiences, observations, and growing political awareness. His journey to becoming a Republican was marked by years of contemplation and internal debate. His transformation became public in 1962, when Reagan officially changed his party registration from Democrat to Republican. His declaration, I didn't leave the Democratic Party. The party left me echoed his disappointment with the direction the Democratic Party had taken. The switch was a significant moment in Reagan's life. It marked the end of his journey as a liberal Democrat and the beginning of his life as a conservative Republican. This was not just a change in party affiliation, it was a transformation of Reagan's core beliefs. It represented a deep, personal conviction and a commitment to a new political philosophy. Becoming a Republican was a pivotal step in Reagan's political journey. It would shape his future and eventually lead him to the highest office in the land. His experience is a reminder that it's never too late to change one's beliefs and chart a new course in life. While Ronald Reagan's transformation from a liberal Democrat to a conservative Republican was a significant personal shift, it also marked the beginning of his journey into public service. Reagan's Charisma communication skills and affable personality, which had made him a beloved Hollywood star, now found a new stage in the realm of politics. His first major political role came in 1964, when he delivered a televised speech in support of Republican presidential candidate Barry Goldwater. Titled A Time for Choosing, the speech was a passionate defense of conservative values and a scathing critique of government overreach. Even though Goldwater lost the election, Reagan's speech was hailed as a success. 
His eloquent delivery, combined with his sincere conviction, won him many admirers within the Republican Party. He was praised for his ability to articulate complex political ideas in a way that was both compelling and easy to understand. It was during this time that he earned the nickname The Great Communicator. Two years later, Reagan was elected governor of California, a role he would hold for two terms. As governor, he implemented conservative policies aimed at reducing government spending and promoting economic growth. His popularity soared, and his reputation as a capable and charismatic leader grew. Reagan's emergence as the great communicator marked a new chapter in his life. No longer just an actor, he was now a respected political figure, known for his conservative principles and his ability to inspire and connect with people. His journey was just beginning, and the best was yet to come. Chapter 4 A Second Chance at Love In the late 1940s, while Ronald Reagan was grappling with the breakdown of his first marriage and the rising tensions of the Red Scare, he crossed paths with Nancy Davis, a striking young actress. Nancy sought Regan's help in a professional misunderstanding, but their meeting would evolve into much more than a simple professional interaction. Nancy Davis was born in New York City, but grew up in Chicago. She pursued her passion for acting and eventually made her way to Hollywood. Her grace, beauty, and acting skills earned her some recognition, but it was her meeting with Regan that would change the course of her life. Nancy had been mistakenly listed as a suspected communist sympathizer, which could have ended her budding acting career. As the president of the Screen Actors Guild, Reagan was well-placed to help resolve the mix-up. Nancy reached out to him, sparking a connection that neither of them anticipated. Their first meeting was professional, but they soon discovered a deep mutual attraction. Reagan was charmed by Nancy's beauty, intelligence, and her dedication to her craft. Nancy, on the other hand, was drawn to Regan's charisma, kindness, and his commitment to helping others. Despite the hardships Regan had faced in his first marriage, he found himself falling in love again. As for Nancy, she found in Regan a man who was not just a popular actor, but also a caring, principled individual. Their connection grew stronger, marking the beginning of a romance that would stand the test of time. In 1952, Ronald Reagan and Nancy Davis tied the knot, promising to support and cherish each other. Their wedding marked the start of a loving and strong partnership that would last for over half a century. The union brought not just companionship and love into Regan's life, but also stability and strength that helped him in his future political career. Their marriage was different from Ronald's first. Nancy became his closest confidant, supporting his ambitions and standing by him through all the challenges. Their bond was so deep that Regan once wrote to her, I more than love you. I'm not whole without you. The couple had two children, Patty and Ron, completing their family. Regan, already a father to Maureen and Michael from his first marriage, embraced the joys and challenges of fatherhood once again. The family became Regan's source of comfort and joy amidst the high-pressure world of Hollywood and later, politics. As a husband and father, Regan found happiness and fulfillment. He had found a partner in Nancy who shared his dreams and aspirations. Their relationship was not just about companionship, but about mutual respect and support. They were a team, facing every challenge together and sharing every joy. The marriage of Ronald and Nancy Regan was not just a love story. It was a testament to the power of partnership. Their journey together showcased how love, respect, and mutual support can create a strong, unshakable union. Their love story was a beacon, guiding them through life's ups and downs, and it would continue to do so as they stepped into the most challenging roles of their lives. By the early 1960s, Ronald Reagan's career was at a crossroads. While he was still working in Hollywood, his interest in politics was growing. His experiences with the Screen Actors Guild and his concern over the spread of communism had ignited a political passion within him. It was a passion he couldn't ignore. Reagan started to consider a career in politics. It was a daring idea, fraught with uncertainty and challenges. Yet, it felt right. Politics was a stage where he could make a difference, where his beliefs and principles could have a broader impact. Nancy, his steadfast companion, 
supported his decision fully. She'd understood his desire to contribute to the country and believed in his abilities. She knew the road ahead would be tough, but she was ready to face the challenges with him. In 1966, Reagan announced his candidacy for the governorship of California. His transition from the big screen to the political arena was met with skepticism by some. But Reagan was undeterred. He campaigned passionately, drawing upon his communication skills to connect with voters and express his vision for California. His decision to enter politics marked a new direction in his life. It was a bold step, driven by his desire to serve his country. Reagan's journey from being a Hollywood star to a political leader was about to begin. With Nancy by his side, he was ready to embrace this new challenge. Little did they know then, this was just the beginning of an extraordinary political journey. Chapter 5. The Road to Governorship. In 1966, Ronald Reagan officially launched his campaign for the governorship of California. As a Hollywood actor, he was a newcomer to politics. However, Regan had a unique ability to connect with people, which he used effectively on the campaign trail. His charm, charisma, and communication skills were his most potent weapons. Regan campaigned as a conservative Republican, focusing on issues such as fiscal responsibility, reducing government size, and combating perceived threats from communism. Despite his lack of political experience, his message resonated with many Californians, who were weary of increasing government spending and the ongoing Cold War anxieties. Reagan's campaign wasn't without its challenges. His lack of political experience was often highlighted by his critics. But Reagan used his outsider status to his advantage. He positioned himself as a fresh face, uncorrupted by politics, who would bring a new perspective to the governor's office. His wife Nancy was a crucial part of his campaign. She stood by his side throughout the journey, supporting him in every possible way. Their partnership and shared vision were evident, and it added a personal touch to his campaign. The campaign trail was a test of Regan's resolve and his ability to handle political pressure. It was a steep learning curve, but Regan rose to the occasion. He drew upon his experiences in Hollywood and his innate ability to connect with people to navigate through the challenges. The campaign trail was tough, but it was preparing Reagan for the even more significant challenges that lay ahead. The 1966 California gubernatorial election proved to be a turning point in Ronald Reagan's life. Defying skeptics, Reagan won the governorship of California. His victory marked the beginning of a new era in his life and in the political landscape of California. As governor, Reagan worked to implement the conservative policies he had championed during his campaign. He focused on controlling government spending, reducing taxes, and advocating for law and order. His efforts to rein in state spending and promote economic growth were especially notable. His tenure as governor was marked by several challenges, including student protests and social unrest. Despite these challenges, Reagan proved himself to be a capable and determined leader. He faced each hurdle with a calm resolve and a steadfast commitment to his principles. Reagan's time as governor was also characterized by his warm and approachable leadership style. Just as he had been on the campaign trail, Reagan was genuine, personable, and charismatic. These qualities endeared him to many Californians and further cemented his reputation as the great communicator. Reagan served two terms as governor of California. His time in office was transformative, not just for him, but for the state as well. It marked the rise of a new political leader, one who would soon be ready to step onto the national stage. His years as governor were a crucial period in Reagan's political journey. They provided him with valuable experience and insight into governance and public service. More importantly, his tenure as governor bolstered his belief in the potential of conservative policies to bring about positive change. As his term ended, Reagan was already looking toward the future, setting his sights on an even higher office. While Ronald Reagan was making significant strides as the governor of California, his reputation was growing beyond the state's boundaries. His conservative policies, charismatic personality, and ability to communicate effectively had begun to draw attention on the national stage. Reagan's speeches were getting nationwide coverage, 
and his political philosophy resonated with many across the country who shared his concern about growing government involvement in everyday life and the ongoing threat of communism. His increasing popularity led to whispers about a potential run for the presidency. The idea of a Hollywood actor turned politician seeking the highest office in the land was something new, and it intrigued many. Reagan, for his part, remained focused on his duties as governor, but was aware of the growing attention. His role as governor, coupled with his increasing national recognition, gave Reagan a unique position within the Republican Party. He represented a new type of conservatism, one that combined fiscal responsibility with an optimistic outlook on America's potential. This resonated with a broad range of voters, further enhancing his political stature. By the end of his governorship, Reagan had evolved from a Hollywood star to a respected political figure with a significant following. His influence was no longer confined to California. He had become a national political figure, and the prospect of his candidacy for the presidency was becoming increasingly real. His journey from the film set to the governor's office was impressive, but it was just the prelude to an even more remarkable journey that lay ahead. Chapter 6. A Shot at the Presidency By the mid-1970s, after serving two successful terms as the governor of California, Ronald Reagan was ready to take his political ambitions to the next level. The presidency was his new goal, and in 1976, he made his first attempt to reach the White House. Reagan challenged incumbent President Gerald Ford for the Republican nomination. His campaign emphasized a return to conservative values, smaller government, and a strong defense policy. Reagan's charismatic personality and compelling speeches drew significant support, making him a formidable contender. However, challenging an incumbent president was no small feat, and Reagan faced an uphill battle. The campaign was tough, and Reagan showcased his political grit, determination, and unwavering belief in his principles. Despite his best efforts and a strong showing in several primaries, Reagan narrowly lost the nomination to Ford. It was a setback, but Reagan took it in stride. He learned valuable lessons from the experience, understanding the complexities of a presidential race and the high level of competition. Reagan's unsuccessful run in 1976 was not a defeat, but a stepping stone. He emerged from the experience more determined and prepared. His political resolve was stronger, and his national profile had risen significantly. Reagan might have lost the battle, but he was far from done. His presidential aspirations were still very much alive, setting the stage for another run in the near future. After the setback in 1976, Ronald Reagan wasted no time in preparing for his next shot at the presidency. By 1980, he was ready to mount another campaign. This time, he faced incumbent President Jimmy Carter. The country was in the midst of economic challenges, and Reagan saw an opportunity to bring about the change he believed in. His campaign focused on the promise of a new beginning. Reagan offered a vision of an America with a revitalized economy, a strong military, and a return to traditional values. His charisma and optimism resonated with many Americans who were yearning for a change. Reagan's debate performances were particularly notable. His ability to communicate his vision with clarity and conviction bolstered his image as a capable leader. One of his most memorable lines from the campaign, Are you Chapter 7, Triumph and Tragedy? Just 69 days into his presidency, Ronald Reagan faced a terrifying ordeal on March 30, 1981, as he was leaving a speaking engagement at the Washington Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C. A man named John Hinckley Jr. fired six shots at him. Reagan was hit by a single bullet that ricocheted off his limousine and entered his chest. The bullet lodged close to his heart, causing serious internal injuries. Despite the severity of his wound, Reagan managed to walk into George Washington University Hospital under his own power. The situation was dire, but Reagan's spirit remained unbroken. He maintained his sense of humor, famously telling his wife, Nancy, Honey, I forgot to duck, and joking with his surgeons. I hope you're all Republicans. The American public was shaken by the news, but their fears were allayed 
when it was announced that Regan had survived the surgery and was in stable condition. Regan's courage and humor in the face of near death endeared him to many and cemented his reputation as a resilient leader. The assassination attempt was a terrifying episode that shook the nation and tested Regan's mettle as a leader. His bravery in the face of this adversity only solidified his image as a strong president and earned him even more respect from the American people. Despite the horror of that day, Reagan emerged from the incident with his spirit and determination stronger than ever. Following the assassination attempt, Ronald Reagan faced a challenging recovery. The bullet that had lodged near his heart had caused severe internal injuries. Yet, even in his hospital bed, Reagan showcased an incredible spirit and resilience that inspired the nation. Reagan's recovery was swift, and within two weeks, he was back at work in the White House. His return was a testament to his strength and determination. He had faced down death and come out victorious, further solidifying his image as a resilient leader. Reagan's brush with death seemed to invigorate his presidency. He showed an even greater commitment to his conservative agenda and an increased dedication to the American people. His resilience sent a powerful message to the nation and the world that he was a leader who would not be easily toppled. The event also had a profound impact on Reagan personally. He later said that he believed God had spared him for a reason, intensifying his resolve to achieve his goals during his presidency. Reagan's recovery from the assassination attempt was a defining period in his presidency. It displayed his personal strength and resilience, and reaffirmed his commitment to leading the United States with courage and conviction. Despite the shadow of the tragedy, Reagan emerged stronger, ready to continue his mission to make America stronger and more prosperous. In the aftermath of the assassination attempt, Ronald Reagan's popularity soared. His calm demeanor and quick recovery from the shooting impressed the nation. His courage, resilience, and unwavering commitment to his duties as president, even in the face of personal danger, won him admiration and respect from both his supporters and detractors. Reagan used the surge in popularity to further his policy goals. He was more determined than ever to bring about the changes he believed the country needed. His resolve resonated with the American people, and his popularity helped him achieve significant policy victories, including economic reforms and defense buildups. Reagan's near-death experience and subsequent recovery also humanized him in the eyes of many Americans. They saw not just a president, but a man of courage who, when faced with adversity, responded with strength and humor. His morning in America, optimism was not just a campaign slogan, but a lived reality, even in the face of personal danger. In this period of personal trial and national anxiety, Reagan emerged as a symbol of resilience. He had taken a moment of personal tragedy and used it to inspire and lead a nation. In the face of adversity, Reagan's presidency didn't just survive, it thrived. His resilience turned a moment of tragedy into a triumph of leadership, further securing his legacy as one of America's most impactful presidents. Chapter 8. The Cold War Intensifies One of the most defining aspects of Ronald Reagan's presidency was his approach to the Cold War. From the beginning of his term, Reagan adopted a hard stance against the USR. He believed that the strategy of detent, or easing of hostility, pursued by his predecessors had failed to curtail the spread of communism. In a departure from previous administrations, Reagan increased military spending to counter the perceived threat from the Soviet Union. His administration introduced the Strategic Defense Initiative, SDI, a missile defense system aimed at protecting the United States from potential nuclear attacks. Reagan's rhetoric was equally forceful. In a 1983 speech, he referred to the USSR as an evil empire, signaling his uncompromising stance on communism. He challenged the moral authority of the Soviet Union and inspired many in the West with his clear denunciation of communism. This approach marked a significant shift in United States foreign policy and signaled a new phase in the Cold War. Reagan's hardline stance put pressure on the Soviets and contributed to escalating tensions between the two superpowers. But while his tactics were controversial, Reagan was resolute in his belief 
that a firm stand was necessary to end the Cold War. His conviction and determination set the stage for some of the most dramatic moments in his presidency, which would unfold in the chapters to come. One of Ronald Reagan's most famous moments came on June 12, 1987, when he stood before the Berlin Wall, the symbol of divided Europe, and challenged the Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev with the words, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Reagan's speech at the Brandenburg Gate in West Berlin was a powerful symbol of his commitment to ending the Cold War. He had chosen the location deliberately. The Berlin Wall had become a symbol of the ideological divide between the Communist East and the Democratic West. In his speech, Reagan did not just challenge Gorbachev, but also laid out his vision for a world free of the divisions and conflicts caused by communism. He spoke of a future in which people from East and West could come together in peace and freedom. Reagan's speech resonated with people on both sides of the Iron Curtain. It was seen as a powerful assertion of Western democratic values and a direct challenge to the repression of the Soviet regime. The speech reflected Reagan's unwavering belief in the power of freedom and his conviction that the communist system was fundamentally flawed. His bold words and confident demeanor encapsulated his approach to the Cold War and provided a rallying cry for those yearning for freedom in the East. This moment, one of the most memorable of Reagan's presidency, demonstrated his skill as a communicator and his ability to seize a moment on the world stage to promote his vision of freedom and democracy. It was a pivotal moment in the Cold War and a significant milestone in Reagan's efforts to challenge the Soviet Union. Ronald Reagan played a crucial role in ending the Cold War a period of tense rivalry between the democratic Western countries, led by the United States, and the communist bloc led by the Soviet Union. His strategy was clear, confront the Soviet Union with strength and moral clarity. His unyielding stance against communism and his commitment to increase the United States' defense budget put significant pressure on the U.S. Uh, which was already suffering from a stagnant economy. Reagan's relationship with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev was complex, but ultimately instrumental in bringing the Cold War to an end. Despite their ideological differences, the two leaders developed a relationship marked by mutual respect, leading to groundbreaking agreements on arms reduction. In 1987, the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty was signed by Reagan and Gorbachev. This treaty eliminated an entire class of nuclear weapons marking a significant step toward the end of the Cold War. Reagan's belief in peace through strength and his ability to communicate this vision to both the American public and international community had a profound influence on the course of the Cold War. His presidency marked a shift in the global balance of power, leading to the eventual dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991. Despite controversies and criticisms, Reagan's bold leadership and unwavering commitment to democracy played an indelible role in shaping the world we live in today. His role in ending the Cold War is one of the most significant aspects of his legacy. Chapter 9. The End of an Era. Ronald Reagan's final term as president was marked by both notable achievements and serious challenges. On the global stage, he was instrumental in moving the world closer to the end of the Cold War. But his presidency also faced controversies, such as the Iran-Contra affair, a clandestine operation that overshadowed his second term. Despite the controversies, Reagan remained a popular figure, displaying his trademark optimism and resilience. He continued to advocate for policies that promoted economic growth and limited government. His pro-business policies, often referred to as Reaganomics, remained a key aspect of his presidential legacy. In his final years in office, Reagan also focused on strengthening international relations. He held several important summits with Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev, resulting in historic arms control agreements. Reagan's farewell address to the nation in 1989 was filled with hope and pride. He emphasized the importance of American exceptionalism and expressed his belief that he had restored the pride and spirit of America. His optimism and faith in the American people were as strong as ever. As he exited the political stage, Ronald Reagan left a lasting legacy. His firm stance against communism 
his economic policies, and his charismatic leadership style would continue to influence American politics for years to come. The era of Reagan had come to an end, but the impact of his presidency was far from over. After leaving the White House in 1989, Ronald Reagan retired to his home in California. His retirement marked the end of a long and eventful career in public service, spanning from his time as governor of California to his two terms as president. In retirement, Reagan continued to engage with the issues that mattered to him. He started the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute to promote his ideals of individual liberty, economic opportunity, global democracy, and national pride. He gave speeches and wrote articles, maintaining his presence in the public sphere. However, Reagan also faced challenges in his post-presidential years. In 1994, he revealed in a heartfelt letter to the American people that he had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, a progressive brain disorder that affects memory and thinking skills. In his letter, Reagan faced his diagnosis with characteristic optimism and bravery. He expressed hope that his public disclosure of his condition might promote greater awareness and understanding of Alzheimer's and inspire others facing the disease. Reagan's retirement was a mix of public engagement and personal challenges. His love for his country and his commitment to his ideals remained steadfast. Despite his withdrawal from politics, the shadow of his influential political life continued to loom large in American society. Ronald Reagan's legacy continues to be a subject of great debate and reflection. His influence on American politics and global affairs is indisputable, and his presidency marked a significant shift in the country's direction. Reagan's economic policies, known as Reaganomics, including tax cuts, deregulation, and tight control over money supply to curb inflation, had a major impact on the American economy. Critics argued these policies favored the wealthy and created economic inequality, while supporters believe they spurred a period of economic growth. On the international front, Reagan's firm stance against the Soviet Union and his commitment to a robust defense policy significantly influenced the course of the Cold War. His famous Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Speech remains one of the most memorable moments of his presidency. Reagan's charisma and communication skills earned him the nickname the Great Communicator. He had an extraordinary ability to connect with the American public, and his optimistic vision of America resonated with many. However, his presidency was not without controversy. The Iran-Contra scandal, in which the Reagan administration secretly sold arms to Iran, and used the proceeds to fund Contra rebels in Nicaragua, cast a shadow over his second term. Despite these controversies, Reagan remains a highly regarded figure, particularly within the Republican Party. His conservative ideals, leadership style, and policies continue to shape the political landscape. The Reagan era brought significant change to America and the world. While interpretations of his legacy may vary, there's no denying that Ronald Reagan left a lasting imprint on the course of American history. Chapter 10. The Final Act. In 1994, five years after leaving the White House, Ronald Reagan was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, a devastating illness that gradually erodes memory and cognitive function. With characteristic grace and bravery, Reagan chose to disclose his condition to the American people in a heartfelt letter. He wanted to raise public awareness about Alzheimer's and contribute to a wider understanding of the disease. The former president faced his diagnosis with courage and resilience. Despite the progressive nature of Alzheimer's, Reagan remained active and involved in life as much as possible. He enjoyed spending time with his wife Nancy and their children. He continued to take walks, ride horses, and even do chores at his California ranch. As the disease progressed, However, Reagan gradually withdrew from public life. His once vibrant public appearances became fewer, and he spent more time at home, cared for by his devoted wife, Nancy. Alzheimer's disease may have changed Reagan's life, but it did not erase his legacy. Throughout his struggle, he displayed the same strength, positivity, and dignity that marked his public life, inspiring others who were also battling the disease. 
His condition brought attention to Alzheimer's, encouraging more research and funding into finding the cure. Regan's fight against Alzheimer's was a testament to his enduring spirit, a final act of service to the country he loved so dearly. On June 5, 2004, Ronald Reagan passed away at his home in Los Angeles, California. The news of his death brought an outpouring of grief not just in America, but around the world. The man who had once been the face of a nation and a pivotal figure in global politics was no more. In the days following his death, tributes poured in from all corners of the globe, recognizing Regan's contributions as a leader, a communicator, and a champion of freedom. Leaders across the political spectrum expressed their condolences and admiration for the 40th president. From friends and foes alike, there was a shared acknowledgement of Reagan's significant impact on the world stage. In the United States, Reagan was honored with a state funeral in Washington, D.C. Thousands of Americans lined the streets to pay their final respects as his body was transported to the Capitol. His casket was laid in state in the United States Capitol Rotunda allowing the public to bid farewell. The funeral service held at the National Cathedral was a solemn and heartfelt event. Eulogies delivered by national and international figures paid tribute to Regan's strength, charisma, and unwavering dedication to his country. The nationwide mourning was a testament to Regan's widespread influence and popularity. The legacy he left behind was deeply felt, and his passing marked the end of an era. Even in death, Ronald Reagan continued to unite people, just as he had done throughout his life. Even after his death, the spirit of Ronald Reagan lives on, his life's journey from a humble Midwestern boy to a Hollywood star, and finally the President of the United States, is a story that continues to inspire. The legacy he left behind is complex, multifaceted, and lasting. Reagan's influence on American politics remains potent. His unwavering belief in limited government and free market principles continue to shape the ideological leanings of the Republican Party. His communication skills and charismatic persona have become the gold standard for many who aspire to public office. In the realm of foreign policy, his decisive role in the peaceful ending of the Cold War is remembered as one of the defining moments of the 20th century. His famous call to Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down this wall is etched in the annals of history, embodying his firm stance against totalitarian regimes. Beyond his political achievements, Reagan, the man remains an endearing figure. His warmth, humor, and resilience in the face of adversity have left an indelible mark. His love story with Nancy Reagan remains an iconic presidential romance, the bond evident until his final moments. Reagan's personal battle with Alzheimer's brought attention to a disease that affects millions, and his openness about his condition fostered a wider public understanding. Looking back, Ronald Reagan's life was one of service, leadership, and unwavering dedication to his principles. Despite controversies and challenges, his optimism, conviction, and charisma made him an enduring figure in the American consciousness. Ronald Reagan might have left the world stage, but the story of his life continues to captivate. He remains a significant figure in American history, a testament to the fact that individuals can make a difference. And indeed, he was the president who became a legend.